So about nine months ago, I shared this crazy life experiment I did on doing manifesting practices for 100 days. Now, I had some pretty amazing revelations and pretty amazing experiences come from that. But since then, I've continued living that way as part of a longer two-year experiment that I'm trying. Now, in this video, I want to share my updated revelations I've had and how I now approach this whole manifesting thing. What's up guys, Alex Hein, author of the book, Master the Day. Now also, that first link in the description is a free goal setting worksheet. It's the exact worksheet I use every year to set my goals, to literally make them manifest in my head before I begin taking action. So if you want, click that first link in the description, you could download the worksheet and it'll also give you a series of emails to guide you through it. Now really, there are three practices that I'm still doing and that I'm using to live my life differently. More in the flow zone or manifesting or whatever you want to call it. More of an intuitive, heart-based approach to life that feels good internally and works, not just one or the other. The first thing is that intuition is absolutely crazy in the cool things it'll produce in your life, including synchronicity. For example, I actually met my current girlfriend on Craigslist, (laughs) where I posted an ad for a photographer for Instagram, and I had a ton of people respond, and I had actually already filled the position. But I got this one email in about a week or week and a half later, and the girl just so happened to be going to my exact school, even though I posted an ad and didn't say that about myself. Now, we met up, And when we met up to speak about the project, there was like an instant connection for sure. But she had a boyfriend, so I kept it professional. And it just so happened that about two months later, after our first photo shoot, uh, I was in LA for spring break just because I needed some sunlight. And by pure coincidence, she was down there too. And she actually just broken up with her boyfriend. And that's how everything started with us. Think about the level of insanity, that level of coincidence, meeting on Craigslist. Another story is in how I rebranded my YouTube channel. So my brand really was about fitness and weight loss, but that wasn't my passion at all. And I was really afraid that if I rebranded it, the whole thing would come crashing down because basically all my products on my website and my company are related to weight loss. So if I have all these people viewing my stuff about personal development, none of them are going to want to buy products about weight loss. But sure enough, I rebranded my channel about what intuitively was more exciting, personal development, how to improve your life. And I ended up launching newer products more related to journaling and goal setting that have helped a lot of you reach your goals. So the crazy thing is that intuition, when you follow it, it always works out. We just don't know how or when. And that's very difficult for the human mind to deal with because how do you know you're going to reach that goal with intuition? It's non-linear. You don't know if it's one year, five years, ten. You don't know the timeline. It's not controllable. And that's the thing. You have to release the reins on control. That is so difficult for someone like me, but also I think for all humans. Now, the second realization I've had about manifesting is that the but part is that intuition is insane. It will help you reach your goals, grow your business, get fit, find love, whatever it is. The but is that, but I don't think things will just happen and your goals will just reach themselves. I think this is an incomplete belief and reality. You know, wishing for a raise praying for it, visualizing it, without ever doing anything different at work is not going to work. You can't be someone who's doing a 30,000 level skill job and get paid $200,000 a year. It just doesn't work. It's not reality. It's not even quantum reality. You can't wish and pray to lose 30 pounds and then not go to the gym and not change how you're eating. It's just not going to work ever. You can't pray to find love and then when the, the universe puts that person in front of you, not ask them out or not talk to them because you're too afraid. So wishing, wanting, praying, all the attention stuff, the manifesting part we think about is only half of the equation. It's missing the law of action that goes with the law of attraction. So to me, it doesn't mean that I just wish and want and like I wait for it to find me, even though that's partially true. A lot of amazing opportunities, like my girlfriend, like rebranding my business, those all just showed up. But I still took the action in both cases. And that's why things have really improved. So let me tell you about my new daily practice. This is the three-part approach that I'm really taking to following the intuitive, more quantum approach 
to really building my life and improving it and feeling good on a daily basis. So the three things that I do now are number one, I follow my intuition, which in other words, you can think of it as my excitement. I'll tell you more about that. The second thing is I still plan what I want to have happen and I still visualize it twice a day by going through the emotions. The third is I try to live like everything is happening to make my life even better and more epic, which means I surrender and allow the things I don't like. So as for the excitement part, the intuition, Susie Batiz is the founder of Poopery, and her story is absolutely incredible on how she was like a lifelong failure with just multiple divorces, had tried to commit suicide, two bankruptcies, and now she has a $400 million company that came from intuition. And it was all like a flow, enjoyable-based business where she didn't study business skills. She followed this idea and then built the path as she went along. And she has a saying that energy is the new currency. Let's get rich as shit. And I put that on my mirror in the bathroom because that's the way I'm letting my business guide me now. I want my business to be so enjoyable as I go through it that it doesn't matter if it has this wild success I want or if it crashes and burns or if I have a low income for the rest of my life. Because ironically, it's the same pursuit. That feeling is the same thing that often makes you wildly successful. So what that means is in life, I try to move towards the things that intuitively feel good. It may mean you could apply that to dating where you're like, I don't know, I feel like that good feeling about this person or I feel that bad feeling even though they check the boxes. I feel this good feeling about this career even though I don't know if I can pay my rent. I feel this good feeling about going to this location to travel. The second thing that I talked about is I still do write out the th- like the three goals I'm working on or the new little things that come up in my life that I want to change. For me, I still have a financial goal that I want to reach to help retire my mom and my parents. I still have these goals around improving my life and my own fitness. I still have goals around just being happy and trying to make myself more other-centered and help people in daily life with their own lives. So I take the time each morning, no more than 10 minutes, to go through the goal. And for example, the goal of really exploding my business so that I can retire my mom, I see and more importantly feel the emotion of when I have an unlimited amount of money, writing my mom that huge check every month, seeing the look on her face, being able to help my sister, my brothers, being able to get my parents out of debt, out of credit card debt, pay off their house, seeing my parents being able to do work they're passionate about because they don't have to work a job if they don't want to. For me to be able to take my girlfriend out to any experience on earth and it's so much fun and I feel no stress or anxiety about my wallet or looking at my budget that week. I just go through this and you want to feel different is the whole point, not just see it, it has to feel different. And worst comes to worst, even if that doesn't work, you're gonna be in a good mood for a while. The last, which has been the most hard for me, which is the ability to surrender. And I feel like sometimes the bravest thing, the most right thing, the most difficult thing, is the ability to let go. And it's an easy idea to just surrender when life's not going well, right? But what happens when your mom is dying and she's saying, I want you to just pull the plug. Tell the doctors I don't want to live. I'm in too much pain. And you know this is the last time you're ever going to see your mom on earth, ever, your whole life. Can you surrender? Can you let go literally in this case? What if it's that you're going through a breakup and it's the same deal? Can you really let go? Can you let go if you're doing the breaking up or if you're being broken up with? A lot harder in reality. What if you just lost your job and you don't know how you're going to pay your rent? And you're terrified. You have night sweats all night. You can't sleep. Can you really let go and trust the universe that God has a plan for you? So it is a lot harder to surrender and develop the ability to let go, which will make you feel good, remove anxiety and stress. It is a lot harder to do in life when things are not going well, or you're experiencing a serious trauma in your life, or you're living in a war zone. It's a lot harder to do than it seems, but it's the ability to let go and just for a moment, play with yourself the game that everything is happening exactly as it should, and it's all gonna be okay. It's gonna be better than okay. That's a hard game to play when things are not going well. That ultimately is the belief that will allow you to relax. The surrendering is what allows you to relax and pull the plug and just 
let everything be okay, good or bad. So that's the way I address my daily practice now. I'm doing that for the next two years, so I will let you guys know how it all works out, and I'll keep you updated on that for sure. But definitely the way that I began with the manifesting and setting this vision was through goal setting. And I've included the first link. That's that free goal setting worksheet. If you download that, it'll give you some prompts on how to approach going about your day and your year to reach your goals. And of course, you'll also get some weekly emails that'll help you work through that process, all right? So check that out. And again, you can check out my last videos right there and right there.